This is Plenty with Sulu. Our venue partner, Department of Coffee. Clothing partner, G Flop. Hair and makeup, Beauty Quest. Be tuned to Daily Mirror Online. Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Plenty with Sulu. Today, in conversation with Manoji Vadugo Pitya, she's a unique personality, an entrepreneur, a woman leader. She's a chairperson and MD of PAMS Hydropower and also Arsulana Eco Edge and also she's a social worker. She's the only female entrepreneur who is the sole owner of a renewable energy project in Sri Lanka. So we are going to talk about Manoji Waduga, Wadugo Pitya. Hi Manoji, how are you? Hello, Dr. Sulochana. Thank you, you can for call me, me Sulo okay. and be relaxed. It's just a conversation. We are, before we proceed with your journey or anything, I just want to ask you, if I ask you to introduce the Manoji I know, how will you introduce yourself? Mm, how shall I say that? I'm a single mother. My husband died and uh, I brought up two kids, educated them. The time I had this black patch, I got into social work. So I feel that people who are single or widowed don't have to think that they are less than any other woman. They are as equal. Yes, agree on that. So, but as you said, you describe yourself, I'm a woman, I'm a single mother. And I got into where I am today, right? That's yes. who you are, Manoj. You started your career as a air hostess. Yes, after my A-levels, I was short of uh, a few marks to go to law, law college. And uh, that was my passion. I wanted to be a lawyer. Then I saw this advertisement um, in the paper. I, I applied. Within three weeks, I got into Air Lanka. And that was, I think, after a few years they took. That was in 1989. That was the best part of my life. Learn so much. And air hostels get into hydropower. Completely two different careers or business. It's not air, air hostels is not doing a business, it's a career. But becoming an entrepreneur, not just an entrepreneur, non traditional entrepreneur where women normally women tend to do it. What made you to get into this hydropower? I always wanted to earn my money. I never wanted to ask anybody. So at Air Lanka, we were paid well. And there only, I think I built up my uh, strength. If you can work in an airline, you become very strong. And uh, people say that if you work in an airline, uh, you can mess up. None, none of those things happen to me. Actually, uh, people just talk. They don't know what actually goes on in an airline. I was fortunate enough to get selected. And from there, I worked for about six to seven years. And uh, the time came for me to make my parents happy by getting married. So I got married. My husband was a very uh, kind person who supported in whatever I wanted to do. So without telling me to leave the airline, he was just starting a small hospital. So he told me, I need your help. So why don't you resign? And uh, then I started project managing his uh, the last part of building his the little hospital and then took over the management. And he went for his higher studies. So I managed it and then I realized I uh, wanted to do bigger things and it, because uh, managing the hospital was very boring also <laughs> after flying for an airline, seeing the world at a very young age. So I had collected some money also in US dollars. So there was this opportunity that came. There was a 50 acre jungle land and the owner was migrating. He wanted uh, the money in US dollars. So I had it and we bought it. My father, uh, my father-in-law was an engineer. He used to always talk about this hydropower with a buyback guarantee. And uh, I was very curious about it because with a buyback guarantee having a business, is uh, really good. So 
we bought the land and there was this branch of Kehilgamoya. We were running across the land, 50 acre jungle. And um, it was a case of brain picking so low. Mm -hmm. it's not, building a hydropower project is not rocket science if you have a good team. And at that time, our good friend was uh, uh, late Mr. Sunil Silva, who was the head of BFCC lending section for mini hydropower. Okay. So he helped me. And uh, as usual, my husband helps and then he gets bored. He moves to the other. And uh, anyway, he was a surgeon. So main part of it fell on me. In a way, that is good because when I lost him, I had to do everything on my own. And uh, one leads to another. So the hydropower project was finished and there was this uh, dilapidated bungalow, which I converted into Arsulana Eco Lodge. One of the famous and uh, we should go. It's one of the famous and beautiful places I were. Many has told me and I'm tend to go, but we will go. I'm just coming through your, how you started. Had a passion to be a lawyer, then got into an airline, saw the world, then came back to make parents happy, then got into hospital medical industry, then somehow got into a jungle, bought the land, made the hydro park, then came to eco hospitality industry. A different or multi, I would say it's an entrepreneurship with all the multi skills, but you didn't have that, you know, when they say, oh, you have to do something, you are in thorough, but you just took that risk. What made you to take that risk? I'm like my father, I think. I have a lot of energy. This job is not for me because parents want their children to be doctor, lawyer, engineer, <laughs> accountant. That should not be so. You must allow the children uh, to do what they like. Because I was given away when I was eight, um, eight days to my grandparents to bring me up. So I was brought up in a village. And uh, I was eight years by the time I got back to my parents. So there was no proper schooling because I did not want to go to school. So I couldn't read or write. But later on I picked up. I went to girls high school after that. That's my middle school education. And I think nobody forced me to do. Uh, things. I think living with three old people, that is my grandparents and my grandad only brought me up. Uh, this is a truth, Sulo. I, I, my mother might be looking at this and scolding me, but that's the truth. I think uh, that is what made me run this Metsarana elderly home walls, uh, uh, to be grateful to my uh, grandparents and my granddad who brought me up, who gave me so much strength. My grandfather always used to tell me, you can do anything in life. Sometimes it's our grandparents who inspire us more than the parents. That I tell with because my kids also say the same thing. But you know, now as you came up with your this elderly home, and I know you do while you are in this business and all that, you spend time doing CSR and doing things that you wanted people to be seen, like you know, be part of their lives. What you said that was the reason, but you do more than that, not just elderly home. You go to prison, you go to where places where other women who are so successful won't even think of. What made you and what is the passion into that? 2015, uh, Pam's Hydropower and Arsulan Ecology was giving back money. So I wanted to now start doing something big for women. I come from a family which was not super rich, so low. But uh, we always gave, we shared what we had. So I was in a position in 2015 to have this organization called Simply Women and started working in the prison, then started helping Mitsarana. Now Mitsarana runs um, all financial stuff. Mitsarana is done by Pam Sidro. And then uh, I closely worked with Dr. Lanka uh, in her cancer hospital, that is um, Indira Cancer Trust Fund. So many, then we give, uh, we choose 50 families per month and give groceries, so many things. 2015 was a very bad patch for me, the dark era. 
and I faced many, um, how shall I say that my hus late husband fell ill, he got a motor neuron disease and with that so many other things came out and um, I was thinking life was not worth living at that time. For my luck I started, I got permission to work in the prison and that changed like I thought oh how lucky I am. So every day twice a week I was allowed to go in, take something for them to eat and they gave me a building, I painted it, I repaired all the machines, we, we were teaching the inmates who will never leave the gates of Alicata prison to do something with their lives. They gave me permission to put a radio and uh, cut pieces. We were making wine cages, batik, um, various stuff and uh, they could sell it. And the money used to go to the welfare and whenever they wanted something, they used to take that money or give it to whoever they wanted. So doing that kind of thing gave me so much of pleasure, I forgot my problems. When you saw them, you realized that we are blessed. Then we are blessed. This, but we still complain. We insisted because they are never going to leave those gates, most of them. Yeah. And for what? One thing they did, they had to do it. Their stories are, and I was allowed to talk to them. And the three hours I spent gave me energy to run the next one week. So again, then I go back. And I am um, very grateful to Mr. Chandana for allowing me and that was a terrible time for me, like um, I would have got into depression and so many things if I didn't see all this. Then um, it's not only financially you feel, you get emotionally disturbed also. It's not, a lot of people think depression comes only with finance. Finance, no it's way. It's a mentally, it's just there's no, there's no one to talk to or no one to understand no. it. But when we see these kind of people, we realize that we are more blessed and yeah, it gives blessed. us energy. So true, Sulo. Then I lost my husband and I got into more because I gave my two children a good education. And uh, I, I teach them to live independently. But I always think what if what happened to me will happen to them. And uh, we women must give each other support. We women must never talk ill of each other. That's a question I'm coming to you now. Lot of Sri Lanka has a lot of widows, single mothers, but the societies from my, uh, from my age, I became a single at a very young age, that society has changed. I think now the society is much better than the society I saw in year 2000 or 2001. But how do you feel Sri Lankan society accepting the working single mothers? So women who are headed households, who's running in business. What is your view on our society on them? Things are changing slow. Uh, things are getting better for single parents, single mothers. Things are getting better. I was lucky I'm in an industry where the males support you. That is very rare. I feel women must help women. If you can uplift one woman, you're uplifting that entire family. Now I came for your award ceremony. Uh, I met people more than more than fifty countries, and I networked. It's uh, you establish contact, and I managed to get a few of my women introduced to them, so that they can sell their products directly. Uh, I'm just um, going a wee bit away from the question you asked. In that um, conference, I managed to network. And I managed to introduce so many women. So more of that kind of thing you should do. And it was a fantastic show for three days. Met people of, I, I have to tell you this, uh, the best uh, award ceremony I have ever been to. Thank you for inviting me for that. Thank you for that. And yeah, we are honored to be celebrating your achievements because end of the day, it's as you said, if women not support another woman, it is that we who hidden us. Women should not ever talk about another woman. You must always, you must train your mind to look at the beauty of that person, the good qualities. And after some time, so no, you don't see anything bad in that person. Yeah. I practice that. My grandfather always said, if your relations and friends are doing better, you don't have to give them anything. As a child, that's what he taught me. He couldn't say, you know, you had to be gentle. I was too small to understand that. But he said, if you're not jealous of your friends and relations, when they're doing better, you don't have to give anything. See the way he put things? So I practice that. I'm very happy if a 
uh, another woman is uh, doing well. I'm so proud of you. And so proud of so many of my colleagues who are doing very well. Because we have to uplift who's going to help us otherwise. That's if we are true. going to put down our own women, say things without looking at what, the, what an achievement. I mean, people in various positions. I feel that uh, Sri Lankan women must support in many, many, many ways. You don't have to financially only support. Now, if somebody wants to come to my lady home at Sarana and give one hour a month, those are neglected people, people with no voice. How nice. And um, Simply Women does not collect uh, money. Uh, we are sponsored by my two companies, Pam's Hydropower and Arsulan Ecology and Ayurveda Spa. But I, I would like if people join me and then come and talk to the elderly people, ask them how they are. It's very sad that nobody bothers. It's actually run by a priest. It's fantastic. And um, I think um, with your kind of programs, ladies will get more and more involved in helping each other. Lifting each other and supporting each yeah, other. Yeah, say if you lift 10 families, no point going for all these conferences. If you go back to your country, that's something I always say. Don't do anything. Just help one person. That would be nice. Yeah. Agree on that. Since you spoke about getting, motivating another woman. Now you are the only woman who is in hydropower and who is actually doing something that even a male will think twice to do it. If you get an opportunity to get a young woman to mentor and to get into that same business, will you look at it positively or as a competitor? Positively. Positive. What, what do you mean by competition? Because Sri Lankan women, or not only women, yeah. I think Sri Lanka is very scared of competition. But I think that's what we need in this country to move forward. I, I think uh, you're correct there, slow. I went to 2009, I was sent by the hydropower industry for a conference in Korea, Seoul. I was there for 11 days. And uh, near my hotel, there was this huge building where one floor, all the people make only jewelry. Same kind of jewelry, but they are very, very helpful to each other. And they make the same thing, but everybody is very prosperous. So we have to have that attitude. We can't say, I understand what you're saying. I would love to help another person because hydropower is not rocket science. You have a good team. I'm not an engineer. Just that I had so much of support. I will definitely give because uh, renewable energy, green energy, uh, that is fantastic. And we, we give the electricity to the national grid now 17 years. We are the cheapest. So of course I will help. And if another woman gets in, I will help in every way. So you said a woman is giving the largest energy to Sri Lanka. Uh, actually, you own it and you yeah. provide it. Not largest, the cheapest. Cheapest. And we have 600 developers, all are males. All are males. All are males and they're very helpful. Now recently somebody wanted a crane. I have a crane. So I said, just take it. So we are like that. We help each other now. There are two projects below me. The owners don't even visit. So because every time the... There is a breakdown. It is our people who run and um, go and get the breakdown team to come and immediately attend to. So they always say, because of us, those two projects run. I said, don't say that. The country is benefiting. Don't say that. So we are actually very helpful to each other. Women getting into it, super for the country. Very true. And a woman does everything better. Ten times better. Ten times better and women support also. Yes, because if you take my project, there is 50 acre jungle, only the roads are there to come to the powerhouse and the Arsulan Ecology. Everything else is uh, um, what you call foot footpaths. Why? Because we have a very rare species called lionhead lizard. Okay. In this entire world, you don't get that creature anymore except Sri Lanka, that is also Kitulgala Ginigathena area. You get thousands of them and various kinds of wild animals. So we, we, we protect them. Maybe because of it, because I'm a woman, I have flower plants, various kinds of things without um, destroying the forest. And you must slow come and see the place, then you might be able to talk more about um, 
uh, but how shall I put it? Um, what a woman can do. What a woman can, can do. do. I think <laughs> I can, knowing you and the way you have come into this position, because it's not a just a position. What I see is when a woman think beyond her frame and look at all the struggles as opportunities. And also you carry yourself not just as a single woman, but also you carry the weight of all the women and say, we can go do it together. That's what Sri Lanka needs. And that's what I think many of the women who need support, they should look at themselves before they look at outside. That's what you have done. Because the moment you fail, you did not just look at it as a failure. You went out seeking for motivation. I'm asking you as an advice to the woman who thinks now the world is in. We do not have a future. What is your advice to those women? Of course we have a future. If you are making um, marshmallows, be the best person to make that marshmallow. You don't have to feel shy. I worked as a stewardess. I'm so proud to say that that was the beginning of my career. And um, I, there's nothing I have done. I have done catering, I have made lump rice, done a lot of things in between. I made tiramisu, I have taken orders, right? There have been patches in our lives where um, actually when the hydropower was ending, financially we were really, really um, in a very difficult situation. We had only one vehicle and I had a friend of mine who used to drop uh, my son every day for two years. So we all go through that in whatever situation, but we can come, come out of it because we are very strong. Well, if you work hard, nothing is impossible. All you got to do is set your mind. I, now we were not paid for one and a half years in the hydropower sector. Then COVID, uh, Sahara, the Easter Arsulani attack, Ecolo yeah. East attack, Arsulani Ecology, we didn't have guests, but I didn't sack a single person, not a single person. And um, even for one and a half years, I paid my people. Because I always believe if you give, you get more. You never become poor by giving. Yeah. Never. You get more because there is some kind of a God above, some kind of superpower. So I have this theory. If you help, you get more. And uh, that's what I can say. There you, why should you be lost? We are better than lots of people. You will be a single mother, a single parent. Now my PA is, a, uh, I, I took my PA. I only asked her. She said, I'm a single uh, parent, ma'am. I said, okay, you're hired, you're, you're hired. Because I always give opportunity to them. Because I will uplift anybody. Because we have all, is being, we have all have skeletons in the cupboard. We have all gone through this. That's the thing, a lot of people mm. think it's not us, it's them. No. But we all have the, our own skeleton, as she said. We have no right to judge another human mm. being. The way we judge, we will be judged. So, Lo, every, everybody has a story. Behind every tear, there's a story. Behind every smile, there's a story. See how successful you, you, you are? I don't call it a side say I'm happy. Yes. Because that happiness... Success can be earned by anyone. Yes. Happiness cannot be earned. Very difficult. Very difficult. Yeah. And as Manoji said rightly, it's a, every struggle for her was an opportunity. She never was ready to give up. She had a dream as a child and she fulfilled the dream, but she ensured that she fulfilled the parents' dream also. But when the life was, everything was smooth, she faced the most challenging thing as a wife and as a mother. But she came out from that, not just from looking at the success people. She went to a place where he, she saw failures. That failure showed her the path of success and happiness. She chose the happiness path. And she shared her benefits or blessings with people who cannot give back. Her story is something for us to think about our own lives. She may not be our own ideal person, but what's our story for the society? Manoji, thank you so much. And I really like talking to you because you inspire and you bring so much of energy. And I want to see you been succeeding, not just on energy, power, but things that other women will think twice to come into. And also, as you said, there's no gender for success. There's no gender for entrepreneurship or profession, you have proven it. 
and I wish you all the very best. Thank you so much, Sulu. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you. This is Plenty with Sulu. Be tuned to Daily Mirror Online.